That's right, from Blackpink to NCT to J-Hope to IU, no one is safe. Hi, welcome! Today's video is super exciting because I'm going to be roasting your fave K-pop idols, parrot handling skills. And I know what you're thinking. Didn't you get a false copyright claim by YG Entertainment the last time you made this video? And the answer is yes! But I've decided to use this photo of Lisa that I printed six months ago. I wish I could say I printed it for this occasion, but I did not and know I've never been to Mexico. That makes me the biggest link out of all of you b****s. So enough of my shenanigans, let's get right into this. Actually, I'm going to stop you right there to remind you to subscribe to this channel, click the bell to be notified, and you can also do little things here and there to help sustain this channel, like asking me why I pronounce rosé like that, or sharing my videos with people that you can hate them with. We're going to start off with the major Mitchell's cockatoo that can be seen in Blackpink's do do do, -do music video. Obviously, this bird gets a 10 out of 10 because parrots are objectively the best animals in the world. Are they the best pets in the world? Absolutely not. Do they terrorize people and destroy things in Australia? <laughs> yes, but that's a human issue because though there are some species of cockatoos that are native to Australia, they are not native to every part of Australia. So people move them around and then of course they become an invasive species and attack your cats. Let's talk about her actual handling of the parrot. So we can see that she is quite stable. Her elbow is propped up on a chair and her hand is very stable. She is not moving. She is wrapping, but she's not moving her body in a way that that could make the parrot lose balance. The way she's holding the parrot is not the most ideal. When you're holding a bird of that size, it's really important to have them perch on your hand and not on your wrist like this. The thing with parrots is that they're really sketchy. They're always on edge because they constantly think someone's going to eat them. So though she makes up for these balance issues by being super stable, I do take issue with the spikes on her gloves. I take parrot perches very seriously. Obviously this parrot is not going to spend days and days on end on her spiked gloves. Regardless, I stretched it out that much so I could tell you that if you do have parrots at home, it's important to have different sizes of perches and different textures of perches. So make sure your perches are clean, make sure they vary in texture and sizes, and you should be good in theory, along with <laughs> so much more other information. Also, it's probably best not to wear jewelry around your parrot just because parrots are attracted to shiny things and like to destroy everything in your life. I used to have a septum piercing and <laughs> um, <laughs> it's happened three times with three different cockatoos who have tried to get near my piercing. Luckily, I stopped them in time. Even if you have a pimple on your face, they will try to groom you so that you're smoother and so that you can fly with more efficacy. They're really just trying to look out for you, but it doesn't really translate that well. <laughs> Given all that information, I think I'm going to give her a 6 out of 10 because yes, she could be holding the bird in a less aesthetic way, but she does have a lot of stability, so I have to give her credit for that. We are going to move on to the Major Mitchell's Cockatoo in NCT U's Yesterday. This is the same species that we saw in Do 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 Do, but I can't confirm whether or not it's the same parrot. Maybe it is, maybe they all know the same parrot people. God knows we like to stick together. Except for this one time where I saw this lady who had a shirt that says, I heart my African gray, and I am a very awkward person, and I don't approach anyone, but I thought this is a parrot person, might as well try my shot. And I went up to her and I told her, I love your shirt, and she was like, thanks. I didn't know what to do, so I just said, I love parrots, and I walked away. Admittedly, there's not much to say about this particular parrot handling because there's not much technique that goes into it. However, he's stable. He's really calm. This parrot looks super chill. I'm actually really jealous of him because I've never gotten to hold a Major Mitchell's cockatoo before. I have seen one through FaceTime with a friend who went on a trip to Australia. I was essentially a tour guide for her and five other strangers for 20 minutes straight. And she told me when she came back home that those people were like actually listening to everything I was saying. And I was like, oh, Good thing I only spit facts. Cockatoos in particular have a thing on top of their heads called a crest that they can lift up and down and it's very dramatic, so iconic. But they also have a thing called cheek flus, which is a scientific term for the feathers around their cheeks that they can lift up and down. And this is how you can tell when a cockatoo is comfortable. So if their cheek flus are up, that means they're comfortable. That means they're relaxing. So I'm gonna have to give him an 8 out of 10 because though this isn't maybe the most ideal way to hold a parrot it is still a fair bit more stable than the way Lisa was holding her parrot and we have the evidence of cheek floofs which gives me a bit more confidence now we're moving on to darker things first of all this is not how you pick up a parrot on the run if a parrot is unwilling to be picked up by you the least traumatic way to pick them up is to towel them. It doesn't have to be a towel, it could be just a piece of material that you put over the parrot and then you grab them from under their jaw 
and then you transport them like that. It's a lot less traumatic than almost breaking their wing or leg with a box. And it's important to do it the right way as well because if you hold a parrot around their body, not only can you suffocate them, but they could also bite you. It can still breathe while you're holding it under its jaw. So for parrot safety, I have to give them a zero out of 10 because what if they crush the bird's wing or they break the bird's foot? And budgies are very, very tiny and therefore a lot more fragile than let's say a macaw would be. I still would not try to catch a macaw like that. <laughs> the cage is also terrible and I know it's for aesthetics, but it's important to note that if you do have a parrot and your cage looks like this, you need to upgrade your cage. You need toys and if you don't have toys already, you need to introduce them slowly because if you introduce too many toys at once, it can be overwhelming. You need to give your bird the opportunity to forage because parrots are so incredibly intelligent. They're not meant to be in cages all day in our homes, right? They're meant to be in the wild flying around. That does not mean release your bird into the wild because they will likely die. The last thing that concerns me is the fact that the parrot keeps on biting him. Now, it doesn't matter how brave you are, you never want to put a parrot in a position where it feels the need to bite you. Parrots biting other parrots or attacking is actually fairly uncommon in the wild because they generally will fly away unless they're a cockatoo. Those are some brave bitches. So I don't like this and I don't appreciate this because it shows me that he's pushing the parrot way past its boundaries. And in the wild, they can simply fly away. But in captivity, they don't have a choice but to put up with your bullshit. Just imagine if this was not a budgie, but instead a hyacinth macaw. Those beaks are meant to break open nuts. So can you imagine him losing a finger over this, over the aesthetic of a music video? It's very possible to train budgies, but unfortunately they're a dime a dozen and people do not take them seriously because they're so small. But if Norma Barret can train his budgies to go through hoops, I'm sure you could have gotten a well-trained budgie and prevented a lot of the stress that this bird had to endure. So this gets a zero out of 10, I'm so sorry. We're gonna move on to the various parrots that can be seen in BTS world. Notably the interactions between J-Hope and this Eclectus parrot. J-Hope is my bias, but don't tell anyone. By the way, we can tell that this parrot is a male Eclectus parrot because the females are purple and red with black beaks. That's just a long way to say that these parrots are sexually dimorphic. There are clear physical characteristics that distinguish males from females. And this is actually fairly uncommon in the parrot world. Usually, to tell the difference between a male and a female, you would have to take a DNA test. They also have very hair-like feathers, which is really cool, and they're kind of polyamorous, which is also a bit different in the parrot world. I got into a lot of hot water last time I talked about his parrot handling skills because for some reason you think that because you know someone who dated a girl in high school once who had a cousin who once stepped foot in a zoo, that you know a thing or two about parrots. But here's the thing. <laughs> Parrot people wouldn't do me dirty like that. That's a lie. I've been in a parrot scandal before. Very traumatic. Toxic blinks who? <laughs> I called out the situation because I saw that the parrot was outside without a harness. And people were telling me that you could train a parrot to not fly away. This is true. However, I have experience with parrots who were trained to sit on a perch who have then consequently still flown away. And surprise, surprise, I'm part of a lot of parrot groups and the most common post I see is, I lost my parrot. You need to be careful with these things. I don't care, you could train a parrot to not bite your face off. It does not mean that the most professionally trained parrots won't bite your face off under certain circumstances. I've seen people with the most parrot experience still get bit. It's, it happens. You cannot train a wild animal to be predictable. Losing your parrot is preventable. They make harnesses for your parrot. You can make a little buggy with a cage and a baby carriage and you can bring your parrots outside. These are all very preventable ways to not lose your bird. You cannot train a wild animal to be predictable. We are going to be talking about the Catalina macaw in I Use Good Day. I'm just assuming that this is a Catalina macaw, but I am going to confidently say that it's some type of hybrid macaw. So her parrot handling initially is questionable because she herself is outside too in the open without a harness for her parrot, which runs the risk of the parrot flying away and you losing that parrot forever. We see the parrot lose balance and you see its beak in her hair. I don't know if they thought this was cute. The parrot's just losing balance. <laughs> Then the most questionable thing in the entire world is that she just leaves the parrot there so then she dances on roofs and then suddenly she's home and this random guy brings her back her parrot. <laughs> Here's where things get even more questionable. This must be an alternate universe. People don't do this in real life. They put the parrot 
on the lamp, which is a huge no-no because a bird of that size would require a perch much thicker than that. Second of all, electricity? Did we not just discuss that parrots like to destroy everything? Mm. You know, most people who have birds of that size, or just most parrot people, people who love parrots and have parrots, have entire rooms dedicated <laughs> to their birds. They have big wooden perches. They have rope hanging from the ceiling. This does not look like a parrot person's house. My point is that lamp is not an ideal perch <laughs> and that bird will destroy it. I mean, again, you could train your bird to not bite into a lamp, but <laughs> it doesn't mean the bird won't bite into a lamp. You could also train your bird to not make holes in the damn wall doesn't mean it's not gonna happen it's just avian science don't at me parrot responsibility gets a big fat zero out of ten because you you do you do not leave parrots alone like that it's that's it for this video it's so long i'm gonna try to keep it as long as possible because i feel like you guys like making fun of me for being neurotic so like here you go don't forget to subscribe and click that bell to be notified and i will see you guys next time